It's fair to say that the Senior Football Championship of 2005 was the most eagerly awaited football season for decades. All eyes were on the big three, Armagh, the 2002 champions, Tyrone, winners in 03, and last year's winners, Kerry. While Dublin, of course, were enjoying a flutter of success and always a threat. Kerry, the aristocrats of Gaelic football, had easily won the 2004 championship, but they had not beaten Tyrone or Armagh along the way. Those two counties were leading a northern revolution in Gaelic football, brushing past Kerry to win their All-Irelands in the two previous years. Away from the passion play in Ulster, Kerry were going about their business in clinical fashion, with Colm Cooper in sensational form. Their All-Ireland quarterfinal opponents, Mayo, had regrouped after their loss in the Connacht final and had come through the qualifiers unscathed. The debacle of the 2004 final was fresh in the memory. Mayo had a great opportunity to reclaim lost pride. Second of the quarterfinals getting underway, and it's Mayo with Shane Fitzmorris, and he gets straight down the centre towards Alan Dillon. Mayo like, trying to make a bright start, build their confidence from an early stage. Kieran McDonald spreading it back towards Fitzmorris again, letting it fly. Didn't look too hopeful when he hit that one there. That's McGarrity and Moran in there in the centre. Darrow Shea fisting it down beautifully, and it's Declan O'Sullivan drifting in. Beautifully in here. Gooch, what a goal! Oh, what what a, a cracker! As in the All-Ireland final, Gooch again. Coming to the aid of the party in the sixth minute. What a cracker this is. Declan O'Sullivan setting it up. Beautiful jink by Gooch Cooper. And a fabulous finish there. This is his eighth goal in championship football. O'Sullivan, fleet-footed. Gooch coming away off the corner forward position. Here's William Kirby. Loves playing against Mayo. Back in. And that's a penalty. Mike Frank taken down. David Heaney dragged him to the ground. And it's a penalty for Kerry, and everything is going their way. So the punishment is a yellow card for David Heaney. Dara Okaneda bidding to add to the ten goals he's got so far in championship football, and he's put it wide. And it's a let-off, at least for now, for Mayo. A really good chance presented to Kerry. Here it is from the reverse angle, doesn't look any better from Darrow Kennedy's point of view. McGarrity taking it from his own kick out. Now a quick look around to see who's moving. Shane Fitzmorris. Nicely inside here, released by Austin O'Malley, down to Kieran McDonald, going for the point from the angle. He's uh, got it. Again, the umpires have a quick little look across to one another. First for the day for Kieran McDonald. Good score on the run that time. Coming in from the angle. Lovely little one-two involving Austin O'Malley. Broken down again for Kerry, who are winning so much scrappage. Ball in the middle of the field. And they have Declan O'Sullivan simply running the show, running at Mayo and belting over beauties. Out to Mike Frank, making the angles for themselves. Hassett. O'Mahony had been available. That's Aidan O'Mahony. Finally reaches him. Mayo trying to keep them at bay, force them out. Make the kick more difficult for them. But Kerry are patient, Darrow Shea, inside to William Kirby from an impossible angle. Oh, he's got it, and it's an amazing point. A real heartbreaker for Mayo, but what a score for Kerry by William Kirby. Here comes Tomas O'Shea. And the distinction of hitting the winning point in Porky Cueve just four weeks ago in the Munster final. Hassett. Nice ball in, beautifully in for Gooch. Thought about the turn to the left. Going by Garrity. 
Very few people anywhere in this country can mark him. One of the best around, and that's a goal and a point now from two shots by Colin Cooper of Dr. Crokes and Killarney. Well, Geraghty is having an honest go at it here, but he still got by. And then it's Billy Joe Padden to send it along. The marking is slack by Kerry at the back. They're not so secure back there. Dylan coming in, firing it. A real hit and hope one, but he looked good, and he fired a beauty. Hit ahead once again towards Kieran McDonald. Trounced in the All-Ireland final, but they've come back to restore pride and to go with an appoint of the All-Ireland champions. And McDonald, as in the final last year, has got a third point. Here's Aidan O'Mahony. Kerry now building up to get the lead score again, sending it in behind Patter Gardner. Gooch Cooper trying to steal it from him. Reinforcements arrive in the shape of Dermot Geraghty. And it's going to be a line ball to Kerry. Dangerously in, dropped down and belted into the back of the net. Oh. Now where was the forward when that one went in? He's giving it. He's giving it. Darrow Shea's goal. And James Nallen has dropped it, that's the problem. A lot of people in the square, we get a look at it in the replay, but the referee is giving it, that's what counts. Here's the Goochter kicking in, a, a dangerous one, of course. I think James Nallen is first up, misses it. I think it's Darrow O'Shea who's got it. This is a good battling performance by Kerry in the second half. Showing class, showing determination, coming forward now in wave after wave of dangerous attack. Full of creativity. Here's Brosnan. Play to the Gooch. Spills loose over here to Mike Frank Russell. What a combination they've got. And what a point that is. Absolutely sensational football. Scintillating. I think the experts have judged this one accurately. Now it's up to Mayo to make a fight of it. And to close the gap again. McDonald. Cutting inside or thought about it outside of the boot. That is so difficult to uh, come off. Brilliant technique. McDonald with a fifth point. He's enjoyed himself here. Just look at the technique here involved. Cutting inside, out again, then outside of the boot. Here's Pat Kelly. Taking on McCarthy. Played back to Nallon. To McDonald. Trying to pick out a colleague, O'Malley trying to keep it in play, does well against Tom O'Sullivan. Austin O'Malley, back to David Heaney. Forgetting about full-back, going to full forward, and putting it over the bar as he knifed his way through. David Heaney up from the back. Here's Mike McCarthy. McDonald's chasing after him. Still McCarthy, forced into the corner. Darrow Kineda looking for the best positioned player. It's Tomas O'Shea in his view. Support from Brosnan. Comes back out here again towards Galvin. P. Galvin in the papers tomorrow, not two. That's his second. Murphy helps Kerry to win the kick out through Brosnan, dished off to O'Sullivan. Almost lost control of it, out to Galvin again. Is he going to do it once more? Are the selectors watching? Three points, three shots. McDonald, little chip ahead. David Heaney, two great battlers, fought their hearts out. Here's O'Malley. Now, has he measured this one well? He has. Good stuff by Austin O'Malley. Great to see a player who continues to try to hit the shots and doesn't hide when he's missed a few, takes on the responsibility, one of the names to build on for the future. All the way down towards Austin O'Malley again, being asking questions of a couple of the Kerry fullback players, Kieran McDonald, who's been a handful all through. 
Look at the precise pass once again in here. Played back out towards O'Malley. This one goes over the bar. A fourth for Austin O'Malley. That's uh, four from five shots. Here comes MacDonald again, tormenting McCarthy. Into the mix. And Shane Fitzmaurice takes it down. Played to Austin O'Malley, and he has put it over for his fifth point. Jack O'Connor will be raging over this sort of a finish now to leave one score between the teams after their second half dominance. Well, the 58 minutes is when Kerry last scored. They've won. They've got through this barrier at the quarterfinal stage by three points. Declan O'Sullivan was one of their stars, but at the other end, Austin O'Malley from Mayo rode in with five points of his own. Final score at Croke Park in the second quarter final. It's Kerry, 215, Mayo, 18 points. Boosted by their performance in losing narrowly to Kerry in the Munster final, Cork faced into their quarter final with Connacht champions Galway with great confidence. Galway were favourites, but only marginally so. Derek Cavanagh got a fist to that. Barry Cullinan. Big test for the two young men at midfield for Galway, Cullinan and Coleman. The break. Meehan goes after it. Can't get there. That's a wrong call if the umpire signals this wide. It was a 45, definitely. Signaled eventually as a 45. There's Billy Morgan. Nervy start from both teams. Me and into Porrick Joyce. Gets away from Niall Geary. Joyce with the space, Joyce with the point. Once he got away from his man, it was never in any doubt. Philip Clifford, lots of movement from him. He was the captain in 99. It's Hanley beside him. Ran straight into Paul Clancy. Connor McCarthy. Well, they're having to work hard to keep this alive. James Masters. Brendan Gerald Sullivan. Spots the space. Spots Anthony Lynch in that space. Owen Sexton completely free. Nicholas Murphy waiting inside. Sexton went for the point himself. Well, he's put it over. But Nicholas Murphy was totally unmarked just in front of the Galway goal. Gary Murphy, like Geary, latecomer to the Cork senior panel, 30 years of age. Here's Kevin McMahon. McMahon with runners left and right, Sexton to his right, inside to James Masters. Goal chance! Is that a penalty? Yes, it is. Masters, ankle tapped from behind on his way through. Just like they did against Sligo, they've got a penalty, Cork. Yeah, the incision that time was surgical, and again, I think it was Alan Bork who probably came in, caught him, just ankle tapped him. I don't think it was deliberate or anything, but certainly found him just in the process as he was kicking the ball. Definite penalty. But again, the, the thrust from that time, I think it was Sexton coming through, the support play from Masters, top class. And a change of penalty taker from Cork. Brendan Jero Sullivan took the penalty against Sligo. It was saved and subsequently buried by James Masters. A beautiful finish. Brian O'Donoghue in the Galway goal. It's John Hayes, the 19-year-old, who will take the penalty kick. Hayes against O'Donoghue, brilliant, absolutely superb. Perfect placement from Hayes. Court lead. Textbook penalty kick that time, just low, right to the corner, very little that young O'Donoghue could do for it, even though he anticipated it very well. Top-class strike. Here's Joe Bergen of Galway. Owen Sexton with him, Bergen. Hasn't got the ball anymore. Cork has. Sean Armstrong, Torek Joyce, Joyce fancies this, the confidence is up, that is just top draw from Torek Joyce, great response to the Cork penalty, one of the best points you will see in any game. That is a delightful strike that time from Torek Joyce. Nicholas Murphy, it's very crowded in there, they both crowded at midfield in their provincial finals. Michael Meath. That's Niall Geary is marking him. Remember, Geary on a yellow card. Meehan 
one way, then the other. Great feet from me, but can he get away from the cover? Has to turn back again. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. They say in Galway they're still waiting for him to do it on the senior stage, but that isn't bad at all, is it? Well, certainly, Niall Geary's legs that time will have been a knot after the twist, and he got that time from Michael Meehan again, who gets back onto his trusty left foot, has the confidence again to swing over an excellent point. Some of the point scoring, Dara, so far has been top drawer. Taken by Kevin McMahon at the back of that cluster of players. Noel O'Leary. Kevin McMahon. Galway have only three attackers in the core calf, so you can see how congested it is. Here's James Masters. Hard to find space, but he's got some space, and he's got some support from Brendan Jero O'Sullivan. Brilliant. He needs to start well, Brendan Jero O'Sullivan. Level for a fourth time in this match, and he has started well. That augurs well for Cork. Clancy, Michael Donlan. Compre completely free is Barry Cullinan. Has Declan Meehan overlapping. Cullinan belts it in towards Meehan. Oh, Dwyer has dropped it. Meehan in there. Goal for Galway. What a disaster for Kevin O'Dwyer. He is vulnerable under the high ball and he's been caught. Well, it was just oohing and on to myself there with the beauty of the foot passing there out of the goal of defence. But it took ultimately a mistake by Kevin O'Dwyer to present the, the occasion for Meehan, who had the presence of mind to exploit it and take an opportunist goal. But the foot passing from the left cornerback position across the field that resulted in that was worth watching again. Brendan Jero Sullivan, Nicholas Murphy. Gary Murphy up from cornerback. Brendan Jer has won already. Kevin McMahon, McMahon trying to break the challenge, James Masters, Masters sets himself, brilliant. This match is just quality all the way through. Damien Burke, well they've held on to it, Declan Meehan. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Paul Clancy, chance for him to attack it again. Meehan isolated with Murphy, O'Dwyer out of his line, has to be a goal, Meehan it's another goal for Galway, he got one on one with Murphy, he's loving this, so are Galway. Well that's as sweet a score as you, get, as you could get, again Meehan's strength, Billy will need to make a change down there, gets past Kevin O'Dwyer, but just watch it, just keeps the nerve and slots it in, that's a great score for Galway. Two goals in three minutes for Galway and for Michael Meehan. Nicholas Murphy just couldn't hang on to it. Looks good for Galway at the moment, but a long way to go. Niall Coleman. Again, look at that switch it all the way across. Torrick Joyce looking for the space, finding the space and possession. Alan Burke has come up with him, the right cornerback. Joyce just teasing. Graham Canty, Sean Armstrong. Niall Geary with him, some trickery from Armstrong, he's got support inside as well, look at that. They were calling them the Terrible Twins Part 2 in Galway, which the comparisons were probably a little unfair. McMahon to Conor McCarthy, James Masters is the player ahead of him. McCarthy, still in possession, got away from Damian Burke, Brenda Gerald Sullivan. Declan Meehan is marking him, O'Sullivan on the left boot, shouts a great score, white flag goes up. And that's what it is, a wonderful score off the left foot. Graham Canty, Anthony Lynch shouting for it over here, but they'll go the other side, Conor McCarthy making a move ahead of Canty, hasn't lost it, never will. Here's Anthony Lynch, Lynch up from centre-back, Brenda Jero O'Sullivan behind him. Clancy's challenge wasn't good, Jersey pulled on Lynch, he's got his point, would have got the free anyway. Shirt was been pulled back, very positive football from Lynch. Here come Cork, James Masters, wind aiding him now, remember, Philip Clifford goes after it, Clifford manages to hang on, Alan Burke is the Galway right cornerback, Brendan Jair O'Sullivan. Hat-trick of points for the full forward. Not playing at full forward but doing extremely well, and again, yeah, that's a good sign for Cork, his confidence up. Fine score and a good start to the second half for Cork. Just a goal between them. He'll be happier now, Billy Morgan. A lot of people congratulated them after their performance in the Munster final. 
and he told them it simply wasn't good enough. The scores from Freeze. Now here's Derek Kavanagh to Brendan Jarrah Sullivan. The goals are flowing in Croke Park. What He's a playing goal. a blinder. Oh. What a goal. What a goal. But again, the goal of a defensively asking questions of themselves. How come two players that time were able to drift into a threatening position without markers going with them? But the perception there of that pass coming through. Two good hand passes, but the quality of the finish rips it into the corner of the net. What a game we have here in front of us, Dara. It hit the post, but nestled safely in the back of the net. They've had problems scoring goals in the past, but not today. Paul Clancy. Galway looking to respond straight away. His opposite number, Anthony Lynch, claiming the ball. He's having a big game in the second half for Cork, getting through a lot of work. Barry Cullinan, challenged heavily by Nicholas Murphy. Owen Sexton. John Hayes. Sexton back to Hayes. Again, completely free inside is Kevin McMahon. He's lost his marker. McMahon raiding through. McMahon goes for the point and gets it. They're really moving now. Yeah, great pass, great support running that time from McMahon. Joe Bergen had to track him back. Again, the defensive qualities that goal over exercising so well and applying so well in the first half have deserted him for the last while. Paul Clancy. Well, it's now Galway will be looking to the experienced heads, the likes of Donlan and Joyce and Clancy, to steady them again. Noel Meehan. Meehan, difficult angle. White, wrong shot selection. About 14 minutes to go. Galway haven't scored in 12. Barry Cullinan taken off him by James Masters. Good. Powerful fielding. It was McMahon indeed. And look at Anthony Lynch again raiding forward. Lynch with options left and right, but still going. Looking for his second point. Superb. Touches the air in delight. Anthony Lynch. His second point of this match. Anxious times for the Galway management. Joe Bergen, they just can't get the ball, Galway. Connor McCarthy worrying for Galway, starting to see more of it. Here's Philip Clifford. Clifford, somehow managing to hang on to it. That looks brilliant. It is brilliant from Philip Clifford. He's back on the team. He's proving a point. And Cork are really moving at the moment. Four down at half time. They're four up now. Oh, such a turnaround. And again, the strength of Clifford that time, despite the pressure from Alan Bourke, strikes a wonderful score. And that has been a feature of the afternoon. The high quality of point scoring from play by both sides. Poor Joyce. Again, they look for Meehan. Meehan gets a touch to it. Michael Meehan for Galway. Away from the goal by O'Connor. Meehan comes back. And Meehan gets his point. And for all the trouble they've had, look at the deficit now. Oh, yeah, great score by Meehan. And maybe this first touch just betrayed him a little bit in that case. Good tackling by Murphy at once. Put him out. But again, he had the confidence to get the ball onto his right foot and take a score. Two points. 2-13, 2-11. Derek Kavanagh, Philip Clifford has treated us to a fantastic point in the second half. Brendan Jero Sullivan, a goal and a couple of points as well. John Hayes just taking the pace out of it, holding it up, waiting for the opening. John Hayes to put them three clear. That's fantastic, absolutely brilliant. The angle for a right-footed kicker, almost impossible. That is He's a, been brilliant, that's though. That's an absolute beauty in that kid. Just watch him with Finney and Hanley. Strength that kind of throw him aside and again launch a delightful strike through the posts. Again, it's been a feature of the afternoon that trademark scores from distance from both sides. That's an absolute, an absolute beauty. First score in nine minutes just shows you how much ball Galway have been winning around the middle, but it's Cork who come up with the score. And do they have time? No, they don't. It's over. And Cork have booked their place in the All-Ireland semi-final. First-year managers have done well in 2005, but it's the man who's been involved in Cork football for 42 years. Loves working with this bunch of players, and look at the delight on Billy Morgan's face. They're through to the semi-final. Galway go out, they only scored four points in the second half. They were four points ahead at half-time.
cork her through. They've beaten Galway by 2.14 to 2.11. Ten years ago, Dublin beat Tyrone in the All-Ireland final. Only Jason Sherlock remained on the Dublin team from that day. The only survivor on the Tyrone team was the man he had marked, Chris Lawn. A new generation of dubs were trying to restore their county's glory days. Croke Park was again packed to the rafters to see if the Leinster champions could shock the men from the north. This is Brian Dewar, the Tyrone captain, to Brian McGuigan. McGuigan switches it across. Mulligan is in the full forward line with Stephen O'Neill. Closed down by Goggins. Dewar to Shane Sweeney up from cornerback. They look to get the cornerbacks forward. Stephen O'Neill looking for the first point. That is superb. What a fantastic team score. That's an outrageous score from a difficult angle. Tyrone going about this with great intensity. Philip Jordan held up by Casey. There's movement, the hand pass is perfect to O'Neill. Really causing problems for Griffin already. Griffin has picked him up, it's not Paddy Casey. O'Neill hasn't fouled the ball. Owen oh, Mulligan steadies himself, Mulligan off the upright. Oh, and it's broken kindly. Tyrone still attacking Ryan Mellon. What an opening, what a start for Tyrone. Another great point from Ryan Mellon. Again, it's Shane Ryan who's the target. Ryan has it this time under pressure from McGuigan. This is Alan Brogan. Hasn't had a chance to really run at Devlin. Jason Sherlock, it's good movement from Dublin. Moran and Quinn inside. Jason Sherlock. Two points apiece. Conor Gormley well taken, fouled. Ender McGinley with the free to Sean Kavanagh. It's Kieran Whelan is marking him. Kavanagh turns back inside. Sean Kavanagh for Tyrone. Great score. Kieran Whelan just couldn't get on his toe. And they lead again, Tyrone. Barry Cahill. Brogan made a move again. They go for Jason Sherlock. Favours the defender. Sherlock did extremely well. Colin O'Keeney to Alan Brogan. Brogan has hit that beautifully. But again, beautifully simple football. Again, set up that time. Brogan just looks up the goal and again a long range point. Whelan and Cavanagh brilliant from Kieran Whelan. Now Paul Casey. They've managed to get him free. Keeney now Colly Moran. Moran with a big gap. Has to be a score at the end of this. Colly Moran for Dublin. Tomasi Quinn. Brilliant. That was Ryan McVenneman with a block. Well, it's been signalled as a wide by the referee, but it's a 45. Every bit as good as Gormley in the All Ireland a couple of years ago. Great block. Here's Shane Ryan. They have a two point lead. Keeney is out in front of Chris Law. Not the first time that's happened. Keeney coming round the corner. Caught it beautifully, Colonel Keeney. They're moving now. Two points for him. First from play. They lead by double scores. Stephen O'Neill. O'Neill, it's over Mulligan's head. That's a dangerous one. Clucks it out of his line. McGuigan for Tyrone. Now, Mulligan, great block down. Fantastic block down by Paul Casey, who really is having a superb game for Dublin. Attacking well, that time defending well. Yeah, great block. Here's Conor Gormley. Gormley switches it over to Jordan. Philip Jordan with plenty of space. Here's Sean Kavanagh. They badly need a point. Kavanagh makes some more space. Whelan with him. That's very nicely done. Punches the air in delight. Two for Sean Kavanagh. Whelan travelled a long way to get it. That is brilliant from Kieran Whelan. Will he go himself? No. Goes for the support of Alan Brogan. Completely free. Wonderful score for Brogan, but made by Kieran Whelan. Here's Sean Kavanagh of Tyrone. Kavanagh had to go back as a blue wall in front of the Dublin goal, but can McGinley get through it? 
Ender McGinley, that's really nice. Help from Brogan. Brian Cullen in the full forward position, he's looking for it. Brogan hanging on a while. Moran. Coleman Goggins was up from the half back line. And that isn't so good, but they still have it. O'Shaughnessy pushed to the ground by Mellon, it appeared. Paul Casey, free man again. Now, Jason Sherlock with Ryan McMenamin. Jay out. Brilliant point. They waited and waited. Couldn't find an opening over here. Went all the way back out the field. The result's superb for Dublin. Brian McGuigan. Davy Hart. Dublin leading Tyrone by nine points to six. Ryan Mellon. Bottled up by Cullen and O'Shaughnessy. Brian McGuigan. McGuigan away from Barry Cahill as if he wasn't there. An injection of pace from McGuigan. Brian McGuigan for Tyrone. That is superb. Just ghosted past Barry Cahill. The finish. Brilliant. Conal Keeney. Tyrone swarming around. There's a sight we haven't seen in a while. Collie Moran to Brian Cullen. There should be players free if they've got that amount of defenders around. Collie Moran. Probing once more. Will Moran have a go in his right boot? Well, he's got away from Jordan. Collie Moran for Dublin. Goal chance, Sherlock. Great save, but it's in the back of the net. Mossy Quinn. The hero. The poacher supreme. Dublin leading by 110 to 8 points. Their patience paid off. We'll talk about timing, timing, timing is everything in life. And coming right into the last minute of the half. Again, great play by, great save actually initially by, by Pastor McConnell. But the predatory instinct of Quinn is still live and well. Takes the ball very well. Collie Moore deserves a lot of credit for taking on so many defenders. Jill has the shot, good save. But again, snipes the ball to the back of the net. A great end to the half. What a way to end the half. The players have all left the pitch at half time. Dublin in charge, leading by 110 to Tyrone's eight points. Tyrone have switched things around dramatically at the back. Philip Jordan is now in the corner, marking Jason Sherlock. Ryan McManaman's in the half back line. Sean Kavanagh has gone into the half forward line. It's McGinley and Joe McMahon at midfield for Tyrone who've had massive problems defensively in the first half. Second half underway, they've conceded 1-10, and apart from the Ulster final, the draw game, when they conceded 2-8 in the whole game, they haven't conceded as much in a match, and we've still 35 minutes to go. Sean Cavanagh through for Tyrone. Good start, very good start for them. Cavanagh getting through, that's his forte. Up in the air for Mossy Quinn. The break kind to Dublin and Conal Keeney. Keeney on that trusty left boot. That looks brilliant. It is brilliant. What a body blow to Tyrone. It's a lovely evening in Dublin. Will it be a happy evening for Dublin or Tyrone? Sean Cavanagh pushed by Paul Casey. Can have no argument about it. Clear hand on the back. Once that happens, it's a free in. This needs to go over. And it has sailed over from Stephen O'Neill. Just a goal between them again. They've outscored Dublin by three points to one since we've restarted. There's the roar. And there's Peter Canavan. 11 points he got in 1995. Well, they need him now. They're a goal behind it, Stephen O'Shaughnessy. Just how fit is he? That's the question. Well, anytime we've seen Peter Canavan this year. Well, certainly a young O'Shaughnessy has his hands full of it if Cavney is fully fit. Alan Brogan, that familiar turn back inside. Great block. It was Brian McGregor who put pressure on it. Ryan McManaman wins it back. Tyrone repel Dublin. Much more determined team in the second half. O'Neill, unfortunate. Griffin. Stephen O'Neill has it back for Tyrone, seeking out Owen Mulligan. Mulligan out in front, Christie out of the game. Mulligan, they've got to work a score from this. Owen Mulligan, options to his left, still Mulligan! Mulligan, what a goal! That is one of the great goals we've seen at Croke Park. Magic, magic Mulligan. They're level. 
Incredible goal by Mulligan that time. He saw two of the most wonderful dummies made out as if he was going to punch past twice. Didn't follow the ball, just watch it. Took a pass, John O'Shaughnessy. Went again, Paul Casey bought the dummy, but rocketed it to the back of the net. What a goal! And what a game we have on our hands. Ryan McManaman to Sean Kavanagh. They really are made of tough stuff, aren't they? Mentally tough. Forget the physical stuff for the moment. Here's Canavan. Nobody marking Canavan. Goes with the fist. Oh, almost got the point he so badly wanted. It's Paddy Christie who's going off for Dublin. Tatter Andrews in, wearing 17. They may well drop Barry Cahill back to fullback. I don't know. But it's Andrews who's gone into Mark Mulligan. Stephen O'Neill. Now Canavan away from O'Shaughnessy who seemed to slip. Peter Canavan for Tyrone. Trying to work the angle, make the space. O'Neill has gone ahead of him. What a pass through to O'Neill. Stephen O'Neill. Oh, side netting, side netting. Oh, the pass that time was exquisite from Canavan. So Stephen O'Neill coming at the blind side. The pass of the season as far as I'd be concerned. McGuigan got hands to that. Here's Enda McGinley. McGinley has Dewar free. Now it's played to Brian Dewar. Ryan McMenamin up with him. Dewar! Oh, fantastic! What a point! That is incredible from Brian Dewar at Tyrone lead. They've got their noses in front. Stephen O'Neill, Canavan and Mulligan up there. The teacher and the student, or it used to be that way anyway. Here's Canavan. Stephen O'Neill. O'Neill just measuring up the options. Here's Canavan. They're probing, waiting for the right opening. O'Neill. They lead by a point. Oh. What a score, Darren. That's incredible for a man who had shot seven wides. You would think the head would be down, but boy, oh boy, that was outrageous. But again, Canavan centrally involved in it. Just watch him right foot, difficult angle, great end result. A two-point game. Dublin racked up 110 in the first half with just two since we started again. But here they come. Senan Connell. Jason Sherlock is away from Chris Long. Can't hang on to it. Quinn nips in. Mossy Quinn. It's a one-point game. <laughs> Dublin's future in the championship on the line. Tyrone seconds away from the semi-final. Conal Keeney. Will they get one more chance? Surely they will. Here's Brian Cullen. Cullen got one way, then the other to free in. Mossy Quinn was the hero against Leash. He can be the hero again. I think the referee has told Mossy Quinn that this is it. This is the last kick of this quarter final. And it's been moved forward for descent. Well, there were other players having words with him on one of the earlier attempts, which he missed. Got one from play after 34 minutes. This has got to be to force a replay. The draw was 7-1 to one this morning. Was that the smart money? Mossy Quinn, the hero again for Dublin. 1-14 apiece. We're level for a fifth time. Wow. 1-14 apiece. There it is, it's over. Dublin drew with Donegal in 2002. They beat them in the replay. Have Tyrone missed their chance? Dublin very, very relieved to get another crack at this. But it's finished in a draw. They'll have to do it all again. Dublin had scored 114 against Tyrone, more than any other team had managed all year. But they had only managed four points in the second half. The changes Tyrone had made at half time were perfect with Conor Gormley at centre-back, Enda McGinley at midfield and Sean Kavanagh at half-forward, they looked a truly formidable outfit. And the drawn game had also seen the rebirth of Owen Mulligan. The replay again saw the dubs attract a capacity crowd, but would they have the quality to take the replay? A 
actually what surprises me is that Kavanagh is wing forward, Dara, and I think it's um, McGinley has stayed midfield. Now, Stephen O'Neill out in front of Paul Griffin. Straight away, eight wides the last eight. McGinley into it now, Casey, and now Dewar. Brian Dewar, what a start for Tyrone. They started well the last day, they've done it again here. A point after some 20 seconds from the Tyrone captain. Tungsten's kick out, so important. Where will it end up? It comes to Barry Cattle. Cattle taking McGuigan along, that's a free in. Cattle has taken it already, Cole Keeney to Brian Cullen. Cullen looking to equalise. It just feels like it's going to be a super match. Shane Ryan going high, Kavanagh with it. Kavanagh wearing a very heavy-looking strapping on his right thigh. Here's Alan Brogan taking Chris Lawn with him, Dublin lead. Alan Brogan in a more advanced position, but very effective. Darren McGee, how will he cope with the rigours of this championship game? The quarter-final replay. Here's Sean Cavanagh on his left boot. This is some start. Here's Stephen O'Neill. Brian Dewar is the furthest forward. He's aiming for Dewar. McGuigan there too. Dewar getting lots of space off Casey. Brian Dewar. He's got it. Three points to two. Two of them for Brian Dewar. Loud in front again of Griffin. Here's Cavanagh. Big gap. Sean Cavanagh in close by his shot. see. Big shout for the penalty. Referee's given it. Referee's given Tyrone a penalty. Cavanagh burst right through. All coming from O'Neill. Out in front of Griffin again. Dublin cut open. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think we can have any complaints about that. Cavanagh straight as a narrow. Again, looking at the second time, to be fair, Stephen O'Shot and see, the ball away with his fist. That seemed to be a legitimate, a legitimate tackle. I can see now why Stephen O'Shot and see was so annoyed about it. O'Neill for Tyrone against Cluxton of Dublin. A lot of cheering and booing, which is not welcome. Will it put him off? Oh, what a fantastic penalty! You go a long way before you'd see a better one. Cluxton never moved. Brilliant. What a moment for O'Neill, what a moment for Tyrone. Dublin have to respond. And the McGinley with the line ball. Griffin tighter. Here's Mulligan. Mulligan hasn't got Peter Canavan with him today, but the confidence is high. This doesn't bode well for Dublin. Good take, really good take by Sean Cavanagh, but they haven't got it anymore. Conal Keeney to Alan Brogan. Dublin just need to settle. They've three points on the board. Paul Casey is up supporting. Brogan only with eyes for those posts. Has he got it? Oh, yes, he has. That will give them a massive lift. Joe McMahon spreads it wide into that space. The space now filled by Owen Mulligan. Pater Andrews is jinking one way, then the other. We've a dog on the pitch, would you believe? That was Mulligan with his shot. Great point, really good point. Oh, yeah. Fabulous solo effort, and that three that he missed, long forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> and he picks up Shep for his troubles. Again, what a fabulous ball into space that time by, uh, by I think it was Joe McMahon. Jails out in front and a long way too. Conal Keeney on that trusty left boot, gets the shot away. They like it on the hill. You can hear why. Now Long pulled the jersey of Rossi Quinn, it's a free in. This is a position that he's striking from, that he's hit repeated points over the summer. Should he, so if he visualises things, he should have no difficulty in getting this one. Execution is what it's... All about for Mossy Quinn and Dublin. Oh, and he's dragged it again. The free taking problems appear to be back. Nicky Hart deep in consultation with his management team. 
It's a big take from Ryan Mellon. Dublin squeezing them. Philip Jordan. Jordan lifted across to Brian McGuigan. Ryan Mellon. Two man full forward line waiting again. Mulligan is out in front of O'Shaughnessy. Owen oh, Mulligan. Familiar turn. Will it be the white flag? Yes, it will. That's a great point. They had the ball for so long there. Yeah, no, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Alan Brogan's uh, gone. There's clearly a problem there. And again, that'll be a huge loss to Dublin. Brian Dewar for Tyrone. Davy Hart. Brian Dewar again. That was Paul Casey's challenge. Davy Hart. They're hanging on to it well. Mulligan is the furthest forward for Tyrone. Had an altercation with O'Shaughnessy. Mulligan's got free. Five Tyrone players arriving in support now. McGuigan is closest to it. Will Mulligan need him? Yes, he will. Brian McGuigan for Tyrone. What a point. That's Absolutely class. brilliant. That is really classy by Mulligan and, and McGuigan. Where's the Dublin half back line in midfield? They're gone. Here's Joe McMahon. Three players ahead. McMahon will go himself or will he? No. Stephen O'Neill. Mulligan into a goal grabs. Mulligan. Great stop by Cluxton. But it breaks to O'Neill. Will they get their point this time? Stephen O'Neill. Yes, they will. They deserve something out of that attack. Simply because Dublin lost concentration, they lost their shape. Tyrone kept going. They get that block by Clux, top class. Seven Pummel tracking back. It's a really brave take by Davy Hart. Good pick up too. Connell still with him. Plenty of options about McGuigan. Barry Cahill poor in the challenge. McGuigan in towards Ryan Mellon. Mellon for Tyrone Andrews out of the game. Oh, another fine save. He's keeping them in it, Stephen Cluxton. So wonderful another save. great stop. Wonderful stop for, uh, by Cluxton from Ryan Mellon, who should have put that one away. Should have kept the ball in the ground. The box office names need to stand up and be counted and take responsibility for this. Keeney, heavy collision with McGuigan. Both going for the ball. McGuigan is badly hurt, and it's a head injury. Yeah, the referee should call a halt to that one, actually, because he did take a belt in the head. Well, what he's done is he's blown the whistle for half-time, the treatment in for Brian McGuigan, but really the referee should have stopped at the minute. He got the knock to the head. And one of the Dublin players down to our left, while you watch the replay of that collision, has been knocked to the ground. It is Jason Sherlock who's down. He got involved in something off the ball with a Tyrone defender. You can hear the roar from the crowd. And now, back down the other end, there's a bout of fisticuffs has broken out between some of the Tyrone and Dublin players. Yeah, it's at boiling point. For Stephen O'Neill, again, the market is just not up to it. O'Neill, outside of the left boot for Owen Mulligan. Taunting Stephen O'Shaughnessy again. Footwear seemed to let him down. Here's Sean Cavanagh, round the corner. That's Declan Lally who stopped it. Owen Mulligan, keep ball for Tyrone. Well, to hang on to that. Here's Mulligan, but not tight enough again. Mulligan has to score and does. Wonderful say he's been having a bad year. Wow. Keeney trying to get the challenge in. McGuigan staying calm. Brian Dewar totally unmarked. Ryan slip. He's no boot. Brian Dewar, the Tyrone captain. It's so easy for them now. The movement, Dara, is absolutely superb. With the attendance today, 81,882, which was the biggest attendance of the year here. More than the replay, there were 78, or more than the drawn game, should I say. There were 78 here for the drawn game, and more than for the Leinster final. 80 here, Jason Sherlock. Good point, very good point. Barry Cahill, I'm going to have to take some risks now, and Andrew's doing that. Just now, used to be a wing-back, remember, so in familiar territory. Panarad was still going, Tyrone trying to get the challenges in, they bottled him up, swore around him, he did well to get that away. Quinn to Barry Cal. Mossy Quinn missed those frees in the first half, they need this, they've got it. Confidence repairing, two points in a row for Dublin, is their hope. Out around the middle of the park, that's a good take. 
not too much pressure on him at all. Casey is forward, here's Sennon Connell. Support arriving, Shane Ryan. Ryan for Dublin. Great score. They're still there. They're chipping away at Tyrone Key. Here's Jason Sherlock. Dublin tails up. Here's Conal Keeney. Will it be another point for Dublin? Yes, it is. 11 minutes in to the second half. And look at the lead now. Here they come again, Colly Moore. Just listen to the noise. Battling away, Shane Ryan. Conal Keeney. Keeney for Dublin, he loves it. Three points down, the momentum is with them again. Paul Caffrey will be a little bit more comfortable now, but they're still behind. And thinking about changes, here's Sean Cavanagh for Tyrone. Cavanagh slipping, Mulligan's back inside, there were three man O'Neill, Mulligan, oh! What a response! And just look at the celebration from Mulligan. No emotion in front of Hill 16. Again, shakes off the defender, uh, young Lally who came in. Again, Mulligan holds it there, gets onto his left foot and sticks it in the corner. Great response from Tyrone. Senan Connell is screaming for it, Quinn didn't see him. If the forward comes up with this, it'll be some job. No, it was the wrong option. Senan Connell was out the field screaming for it, and McMahon plucked it out of the sky. McMenamin, as you can see, is recovered. Here's Brian Dewar. Dewar options left and right, Sean Kavanagh. They can really put themselves out of distance now. Kavanagh with the fist. There was a goal on either side with Mulligan and O'Neill. Kieran Whelan. Fouled by Enda McGinley. Caught the ball, but McGinley wasn't going to let him get away. Hail Mary from... Dublin, here's Colin Keeney! Oh! Denied! Could be one or two twists left in this yet. Seddon Connell. Need the point, and they've got it. Two fifteen, a very impressive score from Tyrone, and they're not finished yet. Can Dublin get that little bit closer and set us up for a grandstand finish? That was Paul Casey's ball forward, never really gave Jason Sherlock much of a chance. Ryan McMenamin really didn't show any effects of his reported illness during the week. He's had a very fine game. So was Enda McGinley around the Tyrone midfield. Kavanagh on his shoulder. Help outside from Ryan Mellon. Another point from Mellon. The arms up in the air in celebration from Sean Kavanagh with Owen Mulligan. Mulligan's just told him to focus again. They know they're heading to meet our man. A very impressive showing against the Leinster champions. Owen Mulligan. Oh, he can do no wrong. O'Neill inside to Ryan Mellon. Mellon's got away. Possibilities here. Cabin is inside. Goal number three, is it? No. Denied by the crossbar. Well, they were in there big time. Dublin not offering too much resistance. But uh, the manager Mickey Hart will be hoping now is that players can come out of this game unscathed because of the nearness of the of the Armagh challenge in, uh, in a week's time. Mark Vaughan, what a pass into Jason Sherlock. Farrell is in for Dublin. Is it too late? Yeah, what a wonderful pass in that time into the forward. And again, good save by McConnell. Comes out to, to Desi in the right position and puts it underneath. Tomorrow week it'll be a repeat of the 03 All Ireland final. In the last of the quarter-finals, Leash planned to draw Armagh into the big spaces of Croke Park, playing everywhere with pace and precision. But would their plan work in the face of the expected, relentless Armagh pressure? First ball inside, Tony Brennan lays it back outside towards Ross Munnell. Good defending by Armagh, Paul here to race here. Good defending yet again by Francie Bellew. Locking uh, Barry Brennan's effort and uh, it's gone out for a 45. Paul here to 
organizes his defense. Here's Brennan. Didn't really get behind this. It's Alfino McDonald. Comes by the number 12, Billy Sheehan. Sides level. It's a beautiful day here in Dublin. Ideal for football. Little or no wind. Just glorious sunshine and blue skies. Ideal for this All Ireland quarter final. Here's Roman Clark. Being tackled by Darren Rooney. Clark wins the first goal and scores his first point. Fabulous effort by Tori Clancy and he fell awkwardly as well. Play continues on, there's an Armagh man down into it as well. Meanwhile, Leash going to the attack, passing the Armagh 45. In the centre, available, there's a chance here. Cracker of a shot, and it's over the bar. Stephen Kelly to score. Over towards Andy Mallon, who's forcing Ross Munnelly into a defensive role. Ball low for Stephen McDonald, easily beating his marker. Sending it in for his Roland Clark. Well won ahead of Darren Rooney. Gives it back to centre half forward John McEntee. And that's quality football and a quality finish. Ross Munnelly getting away from Andy Mallon. Another interesting duel there, I'm sure, all afternoon. Comes back far as Barry Brennan. Oh, that's a fabulous point. Wonderful play by the centre half forwards. Joe Kernan, it must be a little bit worrying because Leeds are dominating in crucial key areas, half back line, midfield in particular. I have to say that Leeds look very impressive. And the Armagh cage is rattled. Kieran McKeever wins the battle with Brian McDonald. Bino, still McKeever, inside the Leeds half of the field. Coming up to the 45, laying it in for his Ronan Clark. Support play available for Oshin McConville. This side it's Mark Moore. Back on the starting 15, and that's the reason why. First point for Mark Moore from Drummond Team. Mark Moore, come on. Diagonal ball. They love going from the Hogan stand over to the Cusick stand. It seems to be just a policy. Stevie McDonald, the overlap provided by Brian Mallon coming through. Chance here for Ronan Clark, and that's over the bar. Kick out by Fergal Byron, and you can see that Armagh, having copped on to the quick kick outs, have now forced Fergal Byron to take the kick outs in the normal manner. Again, the ball is in. Oh, that's a beautiful flip to McDonald. Goal, yes! A fantastic goal that brings Joe Kernan to his feet. But credit the magic creativity of Ronan Clark and the splendid finishing of one Stevie McDonald from Kalibi. Armagh 1 8, Leash 6 points. On the stroke of half time, this was beauty in motion. Captain for the day, Aidan Finnelly from Port Leash, man of the match against Derry. In towards Chris Conway, after the fancy Bellion. Good work here by Chris Conway. And Conway and Bellio get involved in something that they really shouldn't be involved in. Ross Munnelly going for his fourth point of the match from a free. Scored five times against Dublin, two of them from frees. That's a little bit more difficult, it's going to drop short. Paul Herty sent into the back of the net. And the Armagh players didn't like the challenge by Chris Conway on Paul Hearty. He's certainly, he's certainly entitled to go in after the goalkeeper. We'll just have a watch it. That's pretty square to me, Marty. I have to say. Oh, it is yeah, a little higher. Hard. Yeah, sorry about that. It's championship football, no doubt about it, in Croke Park. Martin O'Rourke lays it off. Faris Philip Lockrum. The support play from Brian Mallet. Stephen McDonald is over this side. Here's Ashley McConville. McDonald there for goal number two. Onto the left foot. Takes the point over the bar. Tom Kelly. Philip Lockrum. Flicks it outside. Far as Aaron Kernan. Available in the middle is Paul McGray. This is McGray. 
likes to score in most matches. And here's another point. His first in this quarter-final. Barry Brennan and Francie Bellew picked up by Ross Munnerley. Gets by the big full back. It's Munnerley. Oh, lovely ball to Brennan. Oh, oh, it's gone through the goalkeeper's hands. And the referee has blown oh. his whistle. No, he's telling him to put it up. He's, he's telling, telling him to put it up. Put it yeah. up. He was going to give him the free. Uh, <laughs> it went through his legs. This is a quite an amazing goal. Ross Mullally got inside the cover of Francie Bellew. He laid it off to Barry Brennan. It was almost in slow-mo from here. Just watch this. Paul Hearty will have nightmares about this. Oh, it was almost a missed kick, wasn't it, Marty? It was the top of his toe from Brennan. Paul Hearty's a big guy. Couldn't get down quick enough. It's in the net. Superbly gathered by Martin O'Rourke. Ronan Clark, on to his right, still a walk. Backpedalling is Colin Begley. This is Clark, giving it over to the far side to Ushin McConville. Tries to get inside Tom Kelly, onto the left boot, and over the bar. It's his first point from play, and his third in this quarter-final. Picked up by Aidan O'Rourke, and you just sense that Leisha's strategy up front is uh, heading into a big orange cul-de-sac every single time. This is Stephen McDonald with Joe Higgins. Roman Clark is out to meet him, there's nobody in around the house now. McDonald turns inside, ah, class act. Goal and four points. But this was very easy for the corner forward from Kalevi. Tony McIntyre. Stephen Kernan. As Armagh go forward again. This is Philip Lockwood. Effort almost blocked. Roman Clark giving it inside. Oh, this is the icing on the cake. Here it is. Good night, Leash. Oshin McConville. A goal and three points. His personal tally on a day when Armagh always seemed to be in control, particularly once that goal by Stephen McDonnell arrived. This was easy. Look at the pass, that's what makes it, that pass by Ronan Clark, the solo dummy out by Byron, now he takes Fenley out with a foot, great goal. The agony is over for Leash, but the journey continues for Joe Kernan and his Armagh side. Started in October 2001 and is certainly a very impressive manager. His side are in the All-Ireland Football semi-final for 2005. Leash are out of the championship. Armagh were very impressive without their inspirational captain. Watch out, the rest of Ireland. Look at that for a scoreline. Armagh, 217, Leash, 111. Cork's surprise win over Galway had set up an All-Ireland semi-final meeting with their old rivals, Kerry. With their hurlers already in the All-Ireland final, the pressure was on Cork's footballers to make it a double. Kerry were strong favourites to repeat their Munster final victory, but wary of a rebel backlash. Some switches and changes, I noticed. Hassett and Galvin switching wings. And O'Shea and O'Mahony as well, with Moynihan involved in a change. We'll bring you the details. So this first semi-final for 2005 gets underway in a welter of excitement and anticipation. And straight away it is Kevin McMahon trying to make some headway. Picked up by Cork again. Noel O'Leary driving it way back down, promisingly inside their towards Clifford. And that's just outside the large rectangle, but it means problems for Kerry. David Murphy from Undangan organising his defence. Coming up to take it here is James Masters. Chance to tap it over the bar. Under two minutes gone. And a chance for Cork to go in front. Which they do. First of the day for Masters. That's broken down in the centre by Brosnan. Breaks kindly for William Kirby, now Seamus Moynihan. Left half back, remember his position in this team. Here comes Kirby. An enterprising ball, but a bit of a hit and hope one at the end of all of that. Didn't quite work out. 
better start has been made by Cork. In terms of the breeze, you'll gather by the sideline flags there, there's very little breeze to influence the game on Dewey this afternoon. James Masters kicks it beautifully. This is Conor McCarthy chasing after him as Mark O'Shea, his marker. You may remember Aidan O'Mahony had that job in the Munster final. This is in for Clifford again, on his left boot, slightly off balance, good accuracy, and it's over the bar. Cork lead by two points to no score. The fans are happy. But that's the second time that he has caused O'Mahony trouble and a good score for Cork. Kerry just wanted to find their feet in this match. You may remember nine weeks ago when they last met, Cork hit them hard, hit them early in the blazing, searing heat of Pork Equive on that occasion. Good share. Got a point in the first half that day, and he's got uh, another one here. First shot. The genius himself at number 13, Colin, better known as the Gooch. Cooper making it two points to one. That's a wonderful pass altogether, and again, Gooch giving Niall Geary a torrid time that time, turns on to his left foot and over the bar. Here's Liam Hassett. Every pass is careful, it's measured. They try to ensure that it retains possession of it all possible. That's a great ball from Tomas O'Shea, and it bounces all the way over. Gooch is happy to see it over, but I think he'll acknowledge that Tomas O'Shea got maximum contact on that. And when you think at the beginning of this championship, the three teams that everybody talked about as favourites, Kerry, Armagh, Tyrone, they're all still there. The one to join them is Cork. As Liam Hassett kicks it, huge distance out, great point. Wonderful kick. And Kerry go in front for the first time. Well, you just can't legislate for this kind of terrific control, terrific ability. Impossible to stop. And once again, it is Seamus Moynihan carrying it forward. Declan O'Sullivan has done a wandering job, taking Gary Murphy out with him. That's a good ball. Good diagonal play by Kerry, and it's Colin Cooper checking onto his left boot. Suits him beautifully, and that's a marvellous score. Textbook football by Kerry, appreciating the strength of their players in the inside forward line, giving Gooch the right kind of ball. And then as Geary went out to him, he was able to check back on his strongest foot and put it right between the posts. William Kirby, quick look up, waiting for support. When they're in uh, their best form, you often feel that Kerry teams down the years, they are the Brazil of Gaelic football. This is into Cooper. That's a nice turn. Right and left. He's unstoppable. That's three from Colin Cooper. And Cork have problems. They got the first two points. Since then, it's been all Kerry. Oh, yeah, that's a super score again. But now Geary is about five yards off. I mean, he's not attacking the ball or getting out in front of his man. And Cork have now gone 12 minutes without a score. There's O'Leary, forced into difficulty by the persistence of Hassett, who's a terrific wing forward. Very often plays as a defensive wing forward, putting the opposing half back under considerable strain. William Kirby just lets fly with great accuracy into Gooch Cooper on the left this time. Left, right, what a display by the Gooch. Mark it down as ten marvellous minutes from Colin Cooper, the youngster from Dr. Crokes and Killarney. Four shots at the target, four points. They just let it fly into him. Nobody able to contain him. That's magnificent football. Still a long way to go. Tomas O'Shea grabs it once again, releases Paul Galvin. Man who came on as a sub against Mayo, scored three points that day. Oh, there's nobody capable of stopping him. That's brilliant. Well, he was never renowned as a scorer, but that's not half bad. That's his eighth point in championship football, and this is his 13th appearance in the colours of the kingdom. But Cork need to get tighter.
Galvin. Here comes Tomas O'Shea. Again, Kerry raid dangerously with a diagonal ball in for the Gooch. He's always showing. Brosnan's available, and it's really brilliant to watch. Oh, hey, Brosnan. I think if you love Gaelic football, you will love this exhibition. Fisted down this time by Aidan Armani towards Liam Hassett. Challenged by Noel O'Leary, who has to be careful. He's on a yellow card. And again, the market shocking. And here comes William Kirby. And Cork have been sliced alive. That's William Kirby over the bar. Kerry just carved this Cork defence open very easily because the marking is so slack. Aidan O'Mahony having a quick look up just to see what's on. There was a terrible ball by O'Mahony, straight to Kevin McMahon. Now, is there movement ahead of him to make the pass easy? If he gives it, Brenda Gerald Sullivan's available. He is. Cuts back onto his right. Great block down. That's brilliant defensive work. Superbly done by Paul Galvin. Darrow O'Shea gets it away. Out as far as Liam Hassett. The champions turn on the style in defence, where it's every bit as important and valuable as up front. Here's Anthony Lynch taken down, and that's a free from the 45-metre line. And now the referee will have to have some words with one of the uh, Kerry players, calling across Owen Brosnan. Yeah, he pulled down Anthony Lynch that time and again, deservedly gets moved. But I must say about Kerry today, the mean business, the hunger that was absent all year seems to have returned. And by God, they're certainly not going to relinquish, uh, relinquish their, their, their opportunity at getting it two in a row that easily. James Masters. He caught it beautifully. That will please James Masters and uh, give some joy to the Cork fans. Paul Galvin trying to set up Brian Sheehan. Two points from Freeze so far on his first start for Kerry in the Championship. That's spilled by Noel O'Leary, dangerously so. And here comes Kerry and it's off the post. It's finally in and it's there by Owen Brosnan. Yeah, it all comes back to a handy error by, I think, by Noel O'Leary. Again, the, uh, uh, Brosnan picks it up, great vision. The Gooch gets the ball, rifles it to the corner. Again, it breaks very fortuitously for Brosnan and he finishes. But again, on the run of play, Jar, the, the score is absolutely deserved. And it's Brosnan's eighth championship goal. Here once again comes Tomas Soche. Hassett. Once again, Colin Cooper. Great point by Cooper. That's a fifth. Brilliantly done. 113 to six points. Cooper flowing freely. The mark of a master. Here's Liam Hassett once again. Freeing it inside for Tomas O'Shea. They're running Cork ragged, but they've been doing that for most of this match. Oh, that's a bad slack pass. Brosnan putting it back as far as Galvin. You can't make errors like that. That was a dreadful passing error out of defence. And Paul Galvin has got a third point. And you get the feeling also that Kerry would just love to take on northern opposition once again bearing in mind what happened in 2002 and 2003. Right now, it's Kevin McMahon. That's a great chance. He's put it over the bar. I'm sure he was uh, probably going to go for a goal there if it uh, presented itself. And where Cork are concerned, only two of their points are from play. Well, some of the Cork fans have decided it's 160 miles back home, and maybe a little bit more from here. So we've had enough. Disappointing afternoon for them. They will feel on reflection, maybe, that the team has made progress. It's going in the right direction. Last year was a horrible championship year for Cork. Some headway was made this year. 
and Kevin McMahon is one of those players they will look to for the future. He's put over his second point. Yeah, again, a, a lazy, easy point that time for Kevin McMahon. Just breaks out, nonchalantly puts it over the bar. Well, the scores from play, interesting. Three out of seven for Cork, 14 out of 24 for Kerry. That's uh, hardly scores from play. It must be scoring opportunities converted. That, once again, is Martin Cronin. Big-hearted player. Inside to Anthony Lynch. Ah, oh, he was going for a goal as well. Got a point. Cork trying to close the gap as bravely as they possibly can. And away come Cork once more. Even then they give the ball away and gift it to Kerry to see what the champions can do with it. Declan O'Sullivan full of running, nobody's slacking up in this one. They've learned their lesson from that Mayo match a couple of weeks ago. Es Brosnan has already got a goal and a point, and now he's got a goal at two. Again, lovely hands, again, great interplay and teamwork, and Brosnan just coming on the, in on the end of it. But it, as you said, Jared, the movement hasn't slackened whatsoever. Kerry players still going across the line, helping one another out. In that case, there, the Gooch to Sullivan to Brosnan, point. Daro Kineda, Derek Kavanagh is his shadow. Comes back to Aidan O'Mahony. He can score too. It's target practice. He got his first ever point in the championship in the last game against Mayo, and he's done it again. Well, there were 15 points between them when the sides met in the 2002 semi-final on a day when Cork finished with 13 players. This afternoon, big difference again, big gap. Well, Kerry have now used their full complement of five subs. Martin Cronin trying to set something up. Again, there's a great block. Good goalkeeper by Dermot Murphy. He stood up strong, he's a terrific goalkeeper. Always does the simple things well and so effectively and makes the more difficult aspects of the game look relatively simple. Yeah, great credit to him. He's had a very quiet afternoon, but a mark of a good and a great goalkeeper is that he can have a quiet afternoon and still be called it to make a tough pass save in the last minute of the game. Well, Kevin O'Sullivan, the one who was foiled. Go short to Kevin McMahon. Inside towards Nicholas Murphy. Oh, that's O'Sullivan off the post and it came back. Nothing is going Cork's way today. I think if they stayed here until midnight and they brought floodlights in, they still wouldn't win this game. And here they come once again with Mike McCarthy taking on Brenda Ger O'Sullivan. Brenda Ger is playing around his own full back line. Now uh, here's a, a moment in history, maybe. I thought he was going to go for a goal. It's a point instead, and it's Mike McCarthy who scores, and that is his first ever point in championship football and today he's playing for Kerry for the 39th time in a memorable pass actually from from Michael Frank there you are might have had a goal he's content with the point and it is a 13 point victory for Kerry an absolute trouncing for Cork they were very much second best Kerry the victors it's Kerry 119 Cork nine points with Kerry safely through to the final, all eyes turned to the second semi-final. It was Gaelic Groundhog Day. Tyrone and Armagh back playing each other in Croke Park for the third time this summer. Both teams were at full strength, with Tyrone again opting to spring Peter Canavan from the bench. On a day of unbelievable tension, only the very best could survive. from County Tipperary is the match referee, refereed the All-Ireland Finals of 1990 and 1995. Who's going to play Kerry at the end of September? Tyrone Arama, the repeat of the Ulster Final, draw and replay, controversial ending. That was the old story. The new story begins today, and it's Arma with the ball just inside their own half of the field. Mark Norook giving it back to Kieran McGinney. 
how will he cope with Brian McGuigan this afternoon? Paddy McKeever selected at centre half forward. Good interception. Joe McMahon lays it off to his captain Brian Dewar. Back to McMahon once more. He's earned his spurs being a substitute and coming on. Now he starts this afternoon. Sean Kavna brought to ground. Comes back to the Tyrone captain Brian Dewar. We have the first three. And that's going to Tyrone. Brian Dewar. Nagini. Breaking ball favours Brian McGuigan. Onto the pad of Ryan Mellon. Oh, Kirti saves magnificently. And Francie Bellew takes the rebound away. Out of the danger zone. Paris Paul McGray. Ops for the long ball. Down first, Martin O'Rourke. Got a knock accidentally, I would imagine, from Connor Gormley. But Martin O'Rourke has gone down and Paddy Russell has blown his whistle. Yeah, it was high. He's going to give a free time up. It's only a warning for Michael McGee, actually, that uh, seems to be the guilty party. Back out first, Martin O'Rourke. Calling from uh, this is brother Aidan O'Rourke. Ops instead for Brian Mallon, who's very energetic, very vibrant in the opening uh, couple of minutes. Down for his Ronan Clark. Loses possession, loose ball, just getting a toe to it. Comes back out. There's Brian Dewar once more, who's gone from right wing to left wing. And they're both uh, defensive uh, positions. Uh, half back, right half back, and left half back. Comes down towards Andy Mallon. In the centre is McGinney. Orchestrating things once again, half deflected. This time by Sean Cavner on Mulligan, battling with Francie Bellew. Mulligan. Look at where Stevie McDonnell is. Ball back outside. They have to regain. The referee has blown his whistle. And it really is hard to hear up here this afternoon. It is, yeah, there's no question. But uh, Paddy Russell had blown it some time ago, issued a black uh, warning to Francie, and he's giving the free into Tyrone. Mulligan with the free. And that goes over the bar. Five minutes played. First score to Tyrone. Good one, too. He's up and running. Uh, that's the one thing that uh, Armagh won't want is his confidence levels beginning to soar. This was a spectacular save from Paul Hearty. Ryan Mellon was under pressure, but Hearty deflected it magnificently. Good burst of speed. Chance of a finish here. And it's gone over the bar. Sean Pabla gets the score. He did so well here. Got inside McGinney. Had the composure to get himself into a good position and then felt it over the bar. This is Paul McGrain. Ops for the long ball. It's two against one here. And the one is Stevie McDonald. Onto the trusty left boot. Has he judged it correctly? He has. First score for Armagh after nine and a half minutes of play. The ball into the space is for Brian Dewar. On Mulligan wants it flicked inside quickly. It's a great ball into Mulligan. Tries to dummy, takes a shot. And sends it over the bar. He really also has had an interesting journey. He lost his form around May or June, came on against Dublin, scored a spectacular goal. Now he's on the starting 15, and you can see why here. Great catch by Paul McGrain. Into the centre is Kieran McGinney. Pumping it long towards Ronan Clark or McDonald. He doesn't really mind. Comes to Ryan McMiniman. Ryan Dewar to his right, uses Davy Hart. Good ball up towards Brian McGuigan, at least it should have been. Battles with Sikir McGinney, nice hand back far as Oshin McConville. Coming from right corner back is Andy Mallon at speed. Back to Mallon once more, nice overlap. Good running by the corner back. Over for Stevie McDonald. This is going to be a very good score if he can put it over. Credit Andy Mallon. But the score will stand to Stevie McDonald. Level for the first time after 22 minutes of play. The finish was superb, and the creativity by Mallet was absolutely brilliant. And uh, McGinley to Brian Dewar, coming through the centre. And now all over him. The ball is loose, it's free. Here McGinney can't get to his feet quick enough, he has it. 
lays it off as Andy Mallon from the Fierce Old Club, but gives it to Aidan O'Rourke from Drummond Tee. He's lost it. And he's lost it. Ender McGinley. Back for his own Mulligan, about to be challenged by Brian Mallon. Lays it back. It may be scrappy, but it's pretty tense. Have it again, Marty. <laughs> and it's Paul McGray. And it's a free for Armagh. And away come Armagh. Brian Mallet past the 65, past the 45. Heading towards the 20, going towards the 13, takes the shot. Oh. And it's over the bar. That's inspirational, isn't it? Previous with Andy Mallon coming from right corner back. This is Brian Mallon coming from deep inside his own half of the field. Number 15 on his back, a fantastic run and a great point at the end of it. Testing ball for Francie Bellew. Gets the oh. oh, it's a bone cruncher and Bellew has gone down. You can feel the pain of it up here on the seventh floor of the Hogan stand. Comes down far as Ryan Mellon. Bellew is still down, but it's Tyrone that have possession in the shape and form of Davy Hart. Brian Dewar. Davy wants it once more. Dewar thinking about a shot, gives it back to his right half back. Dropping this in. Edna O'Rourke seems to be holding on to Owen Mulligan. O'Rourke has gone down. Referee doesn't grab a whistle! Penalty! And it's not a penalty! Absolutely. Oh. Well, Aidan O'Rourke would claim that he was fouled by Owen Mulligan previously. He seemed to go down like a sack of spuds very, very quickly. The referee didn't blow a whistle, and subsequently, I think there is no doubt, this is a penalty. Now, I have to say, I saw Stephen O'Neill take two penalties. I think the first was against Cavan, second was against Dublin. I could be wrong, that's off the top of the head. And here he is with his third, facing Paul Hearty. Paul Hearty, all six foot four. And I have to give credit to Stephen O'Neill. Up to now, his two penalties have been stuck to Paul Hearty's left in the bottom corner. Not saying he's going to do it again. <laughs> Who's been well, studying the videotapes? I've had a look a couple of times. Here's O'Neill. I'm sure Paul Hearty has done the same. Will he go to Paul Hearty's left as we look at it? And oh. he did! It's a key really moment. Goal. Absolutely fantastic penalty. And every single time he's put it into the same corner. Three times, three penalties. You see, Marty, I think you were a goalkeeper in your youth. <laughs> and you'd be looking out for this sort of thing. It doesn't matter that he knows that it's a brilliant penalty. Stop. Beautiful height, right to the stanchion. Fantastic finish. Sideline ball, far side. Ryan McMenamin is disagreeing with Dave Baldrick. Refereed several championship matches and did a very good job, I must say, as well. This one is dropping in, and it's over the bar. It's a good one. <laughs> Kieran really McGinney gets his very first point in the championship. Ball inside for his Ryan Mallon, but uh, he miscued it. And possession given away. Side down ball this time for Armagh. Kieran McKeever. They lose out. There's a chance here for Ryan Mallon. Owen Mulligan is this side. What's he going to do? Oh. He tried to hand pass it into the net, and Paul Hearty saves. But really, he should have done better here. Ryan Mallon cutting through. Mulligan had the time to gather here, but he pushed it, and Hearty did the very same thing. McEntee twins now very much involved. This is John. Crossfield ball. Aimed over at Stevie McDonald with Ryan McMenamin. Onto the right boot. Floating like a butterfly. It's his third point from play. One point between the teams now. Ten minutes into the second half. Lovely ball over towards McDonald from John McEntee. And this was a beauty all the way. It's a little touch of uh, mist. Descending on uh, Pro Park at the moment. Ronan Clark receiving the pass from Oshin McConville. And Clark was fouled. And from the 13 meter line, it's a free for Armagh. And a chance to level this game yet again. And once more, the onus of responsibility will fall on Oshin McConville. Coming at it from uh, an acute angle. Two goals and 16 points in the campaign so far. 29-year-old from Cross McGlenn. Curls this inside the post and over the bar. 
level for the third time after 47 minutes. John Kavda has to go back for us, Philip Jordan. Davy Hart is all alone in front of the Cusick stand. Connor Gormley spots it running. His right corner back, Ryan McMenamin. Past the 45, approaching the 20, doing a Brian Mallon in the first half by sending it over the bar. Wonderful score. He never played minor, never played under 21 for his county. He was born in Canada, but he's a Tyrone man to the bottom of his heart and soul. Look at this for sheer, utter passion and a fantastic point. Yeah, and sometimes we give him a hard time, think that maybe there's uh, only one facet to his game, but he's just shown us there what a good footballer he also is. Highly rated by a lot of the Ulster observers. Critical score for Tyrone, a, good, a really, really good one. It's a phrase we use an awful lot, unfortunately, in the business, but that has been an inspirational score. Fabulous catch by Sean Kavna. The running provided by Davy Hart. Back to Kavna once more, setting up O'Neill. Owen Mulligan goes a little bit to his left, but O'Neill sends it over the bar for his first point from play. Tyrone step up into fourth gear, perhaps. But how true it is, it is inspirational, because McMenamin now has lifted the whole team with that point. Kavna, who we haven't seen a whole lot, gets involved twice, catches, pops, takes it back, and then a great finish by O'Neill. Tyrone led at half-time, 1-4 to 5, two points. Slowly, Armagh got back into the game, level. Look at this for a crowd and an atmosphere. And now Tyrone have responded once more and have a two-point advantage. 19 and a half minutes left in Croke Park. Breaking ball gathered by Brian Duhar. Some people thought they just might be a little bit tired after the replay against Dublin yesterday week. They look full of energy at the moment. Philip Jordan, O'Neill, floating this one in towards Peter Canavan. Getting away from Andy Mallon, onto the right boot, and it's Canavan that sends it over the bar. 34-year-old since the 9th of April. Captain of the All-Ireland in 2003. Three Ulster Championship medals. He wants a second All-Ireland. Just look at this. The maestro in motion, in slow motion. And the ball sails over Paul Hirty's crossbar. He really knows how to pick his moments, does Mr. Canavan. You know, back in the team, the thing is on the boil and he scores it. Breaking ball, picked up again. And ever since Ryan McManaman went forward, Tyrone have stepped up into fourth, perhaps fifth gear. Well won this time, however, by left corner back, Kieran McKeever. A little bit of pushing off the ball, Ashley McConville, Andy Ballard. And as always, Armagh, I'm sure, will respond slowly, methodically. They won't lose their focus. Chance here for John McEntee. That is sent over the bar. Well, it was tense. Very tense in the first half with little or no scores. And I don't think anybody can complain about the last five minutes or so. And Armagh do respond. John McEntee sailing this one over. Two points between the teams. Teddy McKeever wins possession and wins a free. Again, they're aiming for Clark and McDonald. McDonald has got inside the cover. Pascal McConnell is out and it's a goal. What a finish! Just the simplest of touches. McDonald, magic McDonald from Kalibi. How did he manage to squeeze it in? It must have been absolutely centimetres. And he's done it with his right foot. We'll see it, Marty, here in the replay. He's actually done it with his right foot, I do believe. What a catch. What a move around him. He's been fouled. No, it's actually as if he curls it around. What a finish. Just managed to squeeze it inside the post. And now Armagh lead by a point. Oh. Brilliant. Now Tyrone have to respond and seek the equaliser for the fourth time. And they go forward in numbers. The block down is by Paul McGray. Goes to return and just stumbles. Sideline ball for Tyrone. <laughs> what a the scoreboard. An intriguing contest. It really has been pulsating here. Stephen O'Neill, front of the Cusick stand, 20-meter line, going for the point. Cuts it across, Sean Kavna gathers it ahead of McEntee. Tony 
and the referee blows his whistle. Armagh players are furious and they're telling Francie Villa to go away, and particularly Aaron Kernan. He may be only 21, but I think it's a, an old head on young shoulders. Yeah, well, Francie shouldn't be arguing. What's happened there is that Sean Captain was definitely fouled on the very first ball. Paddy Russell was in a bad position. Thought he thought it should have been, but he didn't give it. Now he has. On Mulligan to equalise. It's a simple tap over. It's a second from a free. This is John McEntee laying it off for as Aaron Kernan. Opting for the long ball into the space. Pascal McConnell comes off his line, then decides to go back. Michael McGee, and well to stay inside. Now the umpire has raised his arm and he's giving a 45, or perhaps the referee is overruling that. He's actually giving a free to McGee. Connor Gormley can afford a little smile. Pascal McConnell to Joe McMahon to Brian Doher. Ulster champions leading by a point. Davy Hart just took his eye off it. Here come Armagh. Chance of another point. Hit on the meet over the bar by Ronan Clark for his first point in this All Ireland semi final. Chris Lawn is coming on for left half back Philip Jordan. So Chris Lawn goes in to mark Ronan Clark and Joe McMahon is coming out to the half back line. And of course, you may recall that uh, Chris Lawn had a fabulous game on Ronan Clark the last time they clashed. Here's Sean Kavanagh. Can he put this over the bar? Yes, he can. For his second point in the semi final. 64 minutes and 41 seconds played. One point between the teams. Here's Kavanagh going through, hitting it absolutely perfectly. Oshin McConville. Two Armagh players available. One of them is Aaron Kernan. Front of the Hogan stand, Brian Dewar. Back outside for his McKeever. Flicking it inside for his Tony John McEntee it is. Ball given away. Here comes the response from Tyrone. Ryan McMenamin. Laying it off for his cabinet. Tries to get by. Tony McEntee succeeds. He's on the 65. Approaching the 45. Has to kick it now. Into Owen Mulligan. Battling with Owen Mulligan and uh, Francie Bellew. Back to Peter Canavan. Sneaks it through. Chance of a point in front of the post. And it's over the bar. Shane Sweeney, centre back for most of the championship, corner back against Dublin, comes forward as a substitute. Is he the hero? Incredible. It's the fast hands here. A fantastic kick by O'Neill. Gets it back to Canavan, who dishes it immediately to Sweeney to open up the gap. Well, I can promise you one thing there's nobody leaving Croke Park. The breaking ball favours Colin Holmes. He's approaching the 45. Stephen O'Neill is to his left. Holmes has to give it back to Ryan McMenamin. Scored a great point from the far over side. This is Stephen O'Neill. McMenamin has gone inside. Still O'Neill does so well. The referee claims that he was pulled, and he was. And it's a free in for Tyrone. Oh. <laughs> Who's going to take this one? Is it O'Neill? Hardly now with the left foot, Marty. As he can even is up on his feet. He'll want it. Here's Mulligan. It's going to be on Mulligan. Kieran McGinney looks on. Who's going to take this? It looks like it could well be Peter Canavan. And he's leaving it. <laughs> <Not lovely. laughs> the, the student is leaving it to the teacher, I yeah. think, here. I think we're playing the student one a long time. He must have left school by now, Marty. <laughs> this is it. And Penny Russell had a quiet word with Peter Canavan. Is this the free and the point to put it's Toronto in the All-Ireland Final. Canavan for great. Oh, he's 72 minutes played. Is there time left in Croke Park for Armagh to come back? Stephen O'Neill was trying to delay Paul Hearty taking the kick out and Francie Bellew is pushing him away. Paul Hearty with the kick out. It's all up to the referee now. It's a long it's kick over. out. It's over! The captain of 2003 is the match winner. Peter Canavan has done it for his county. In their ninth championship match, they make amends. They beat Armagh after losing the Ulster final draw and replay. It
It's Tyrone against Kerry in the All-Ireland football final. Full-time scoring, Croke Park. Tyrone, one goal and 13 points. Armagh, one goal and 12. Tyrone finally saw off Armagh at the third time of asking. All focus now turned to the All-Ireland final with Kerry. It was the game the whole country had wanted. Kerry had been humiliated by Tyrone in the semi-final of 2003. This was their chance for revenge. But Tyrone had an even more burning cause driving them on. In 2004, they had lost their captain and inspiration, Cormac McAnallan, in tragic circumstances. In 2005, they set out to honour his memory. Let's check on the team news for the afternoon then. And Kerry's team for this final shows one change from the semi final lineup. Last year's captain Dara Okineda gets the nod ahead of Brian Sheehan, which means that the champions start with 13 on the side that easily beat Mayo Mount last September. Seamus Moynihan, a sub, then is back among the half back line. And Dara O'Shea, injured last year, has returned to midfield. And the star of that last victory is here as well. Colin Cooper finished last year with a goal and five points. I wonder what's in store this afternoon for the Gooch. Well, the big news in Tyrone on Thursday was the selection of Peter Canavan to start this afternoon. It's also his 50th championship appearance. Joe McMahon has been confirmed to play at full-back. Indy McGinley partners Sean Kavanagh in the centre of the park, while Ryan Mellon moves out to wing forward. However, the team's leading marksman this year has been Stephen O'Neill, and today it's his 25th championship start. Flags waving proudly on the hill and all around the terraces and stands. All eyes on the match referee. And Mick Monaghan from Kildare starts the 116th All-Ireland football final and straight away possession with Liam Hassett for Kerry. Trying to set up Owen Brosnan, stumbling initially. Looking for support, getting it from Dara O'Shea. Kerry looking for the opening score just to settle them down. Taking their time about it, Darrow O'Shea outside his own at the Tyrone 45 metre line. It's Tomos O'Shea, his brother, who fires it in. Intended for Declan O'Sullivan. He was restrained, restraining the defender, however. Early free kick. What was significant there, actually, Jerry, is that Owen Brosnan has gone in full forward, and I'd say you'll get a lot of high balls going in to try and exploit the height difference between Owen Brosnan and his fullback. And also the question marks that have existed all throughout this championship about that Tyrone full back line. They may answer their critics. They've been struggling all season to find somebody to wear that number three spot and to play the game there and command the position. Meanwhile, it's Brian McGuigan who's commanding. Stopped going across there. Stopped brilliantly indeed by Seamus Moynihan. The counter attack by Kerry. It comes out towards Mark O'Shea. His brother Darrow slowing it down in midfield. Good ball across to Declan O'Sullivan. Look where he's come. Out into the centre of the park. Taking on Duher. Stops him initially. Referee blows his whistle. The stopping was unfairly done. It's in as far as Colin Cooper. Gooch against McMenamin. That's uh, an interesting looking kick. It's a very good start by Kerry. And Gooch is off to a flyer. Here's McGee. Michael McGee setting it up for Philip Jordan. Again, taking back a good return here. Jordan, Tyrone looking to make a good start to this match. That's not the best of passes. Stephen O'Neill has to come back. Do well. O'Mahony is his marker. Not the best of balls taken up there by Moynihan. Comes out to the centre to Dara O'Shea. Kerry working it away cleverly. Once again, Declan O'Sullivan down long towards Owen Brosnan. That's an interesting switch. Playing him in there at full forward. Taking on Joe McMahon, kicking truly, kicking accurately, and Kerry with a second score. Mulligan's gone very, very deep into the centre. Up there is Gormley. Connor Gormley has just about played everywhere this year. Played out as far as Ryan Mellon. Great kick over the bar. Tyrone's opening score. It's taken just under five minutes to produce. The battle for possession in the middle of the field. Won this time by Tyrone, settling to the task now with McGinley. Great athlete in the centre of the field. McGuigan, great footballing brain. Outside to Mellon again. Somebody needs to pick him up in a Kerry jersey. Good looking shot, curls in. Teams are level. Ryan Mellon's kicked two points. 
and straight down the middle, collected and won by Kerry this time by Declan O'Sullivan. Paul Galvin letting it go in early, but a little bit inaccurate. Well, it comes off as Gus Cooper made a good move. This is a great looking opportunity. It ends up in the back of the net and it's Daryl Kineda. Six minutes are gone. The opening goal credited to Dara O'Kaneda. Cooper made it. The pass seemed to have gone astray from Galvin. Kick to space. But look at how Cooper made it his. Great run, then great vision inside. And O'Kaneda finishes his 11th ever goal in championship football. And Kerry lead 1 2 to two points. Interesting that uh, kick out there was taken from out near the exclusion zone. And it's going to be a free kick in any case. Ball handled on the ground, it's going to be a free to Tyrone. Peter Canavan letting it fly inside to Mulligan. After Tyrone had made such a good recovery, that's a good shot. They're going score for score. That'll do Mulligan's confidence an awful lot of good. His first of the afternoon. So now just two points between the teams. What a bright start to this final. And once again, it's Declan O'Sullivan laying it off beautifully. Tomas Soche now. Again, they hold possession, play it around, then probe for an opening if one is available. Brosnan's a good leader of the attack. Comes, gathers, strikes, and scores. Great point. That's two for Brosnan. Now, how will Tyrone counter it? McConnell. Pass it under it here. Did he handle the ball on the ground? He did. It's going to be a free to Tyrone. Just making the point, how will the counter it, Jerry? I feel myself they'll have to move the ball inside a little bit quicker. They're overholding it around the middle of the field and occasionally running into trap. They've moved Canavan back into the inside forward line. Here he is now, coming, collecting. Might have even picked it off the ground, laid it off beautifully back to McGuigan. Oh, side netting. Should have been, he should have tested the goalkeeper. Hit it instinctively, curses his luck. Kerry with a lot of players back. That's a bad ball out. Straight to Jordan. They give the ball away poorly that time. McGuigan. Good ball because he was surrounded by three or four Kerry players. Tough getting through there. O'Neill. If there are three or four players go for the one ball, there must be a man loose somewhere. McGuigan. Awkward angle. Impossible angle. But a brilliant score. Kerry trying to look composed here as they take it out of their half-back line with O'Mahony. Three Tyrone players going, and a fourth one there as well. Back there is McGuigan. Tyrone have fought their way back into this contest. Mulligan, to her, taking on the champions. It's an ambitious kick, it's a huge one, and it's... Uh, where is it? Yes, they finally wave a white flag. Delight for the Tyrone fans. What an ambitious kick by Brian Dewar. He is capable of the spectacular shot like that. He's done it many times in the past. They'd wish he'd do it even more. The teams are level. Spills out again into the middle. Davy Hart's in there. Referee blows the whistle. Free to Tyrone on the 45-metre line. Just heats up a little bit. Yeah, again, I think William Kirby got involved that time with Peter Canavan, and again, it's all heating up now. No particular need for it. The uh, linesman on the far side, who is uh, Garoy de Canova from Galway, coming in to have a word with the referee. Meanwhile, Thomas Sullivan and Peter Canavan. Yeah, he won't let it go Jersey, and it's all getting very, very silly at the moment. Here's what happened again here now. Oof. William Kirby was stepping in that time, and the referee may well have some words with him. Well, to be fair, all William Kirby was doing is putting his hands up that time to defend himself as uh, Brian McGuigan came in on him. But that's the belt, I think, that Kirby hit on, on Canavan that started all the rumpus. And the referee is talking with... Uh, it's a yellow card for Tom O'Sullivan. That's the end product. Here's Cooper. Beautifully inside, then he has to go back, make an angle, he can do so. What a player, what a score. A second for Colin Cooper. And remember, he had a lion's share in the build-up to the goal as well. Here comes Philip Jordan. Great ball in towards Mulligan, catches it well. Inside laid off to Canavan, great goal! 
Peter Callaghan. It's stoppage time at the end of the first half. Oh, what a beauty, Jared. The combination, the interchange, the finish, top drawer. Just watch the handling, the timing of the run, and the precision of the finish. That is top quality. It was Mulligan who took it down ahead of Paul Galvin, isolated as a full back on this occasion. Watch for Canavan coming in, and that's his ninth ever goal in Championship football. And it's Toronto lead by 1 7 to 1 4. How the game has turned around quickly. Cabana now dishing it off once again towards McGuigan, looking for a late point, appreciating that every chance must be taken, and he's taken this one. McGuigan has got a second point. It's turned around brilliantly for Tyrone, the challengers against last year's champions, lead by four. Some brilliant football, some great memories from this first half. Tomas O'Shea, Kerry now realising they've got to fight right to the end to win this one, if they're to win it. Here's Darrow O'Shea, what a response, high and over the bar. Peter Canavan is being withdrawn, and I'm sure Mickey Hart has it in his mind to remember that you can use five substitutes and he can come back in later on. Declan O'Sullivan looking assured and able as ever. Moynihan running into trouble, but again, Darrow O'Shea coming to his assistance, two of the more experienced players. Five of this Kerry team are 30 or over, and that's Galvin with a high one to the face, and he could be in trouble with the referee for that. Fans getting back onto their feet again, and Galvin has called aside following that high challenge there in the intensity of the battle, and he's got a, a yellow card. Stephen O'Neill then with one converted free so far. This from outside the 45-metre line. Comes off the post down to Mulligan. Again, the backs were all around him, did well, and had the presence of mind to fist it over the bar. And it's a third point for Owen Mulligan. William Kirby, oh, he's left it behind him. Good, strong play by Colin Holmes that time. It comes to Stephen O'Neill. Now Sean Kavanagh, they're trying to exploit gaps. They're trying to exploit a, maybe a fresher, more youthful approach as they take on the champions from last year. Bottled up initially, comes back once again. My goodness, is it in tricket. Why will it finish? It finishes with a most brilliant score by Stephen O'Neill. They were playing ducks and drakes with the Kerry backs that time, and Kerry had no answer. And it's Toronto who have possession. Once again, McGuigan holding it up here. Nice ball inside here for McGinley, who can play just about anywhere. Back it comes once again towards Colly Holmes, laid outside to O'Neill, getting it on the trusty left this time. Beautifully measured. Great score by Stephen O'Neill, and that's a third. This is not like the Kerry champions of last year. But then people have said Kerry didn't really meet a good, strong, physical team yet this side. They are this afternoon, and that side is Tyrone. Brian Dewar hoping that he'll be lifting Sam, but there's still quite a while to go. Bad ball away, comes to Colin Cooper. He'll be up for the fight. Back to Darrow O'Shea. They need to score quickly. Darrow O'Shea plants it beautifully over the bar, and he's got a second. Tyrone can hold the celebrations with the likes of Dara O'Shea around. And Peter Canavan is now going to come back in as a replacement, this time for Ender McGinley, and listen to the cheer. Galvin now. Wriggling his way this way and that, needing the support of Tomas O'Shea. Last year's Footballer of the Year, beautifully dished off by Darrow Kaneda to the raiding O'Shea once again. Can Kerry score here? Under pressure, in the corner here. It's Mike Frank Russell, partly blocked, comes to Brosnan. Brosnan blocked that time brilliantly by Gormley, and it's broken in the back of the net. It's Tomas O'Shea! Silence now among the Tyrone fans. Jubilation for Kerry. What a goal! But a point between them and Tyrone absolutely rocked. They build again from the back. It's the little flyer with the white boots. McMenamin out here towards a composed Sean Cavada. Looking around, trying to pick the perfect pass. He's picked out Mellon. It's back out towards McMenamin again, taking on O'Mahony. Beautiful ball inside. Here's Stephen O'Neill trying to engineer something a free would do. Outside to Canavan. Oh, it's an impossible angle. 
Oh, it's an impossible angle, and he's made it. Absolutely brilliant by Peter Canavan. A goal and a point by the man these fans call God. And Jordan has done well. Aided and abetted by Conor Gormley, who was knocking down Owen Brosnan in his endeavours to get possession. And Gormley continues his run from McGuigan's pass. This is important here. Challenged outside the large rectangle. Spills around awkwardly. Mulligan picks it up. Dishes it back there towards McGuigan once again. Now he plants it. He's put it over the bar. That's a third for Brian McGuigan. Tyrone, 1.15, 2.10 for Kerry. Philip Jordan, Jordan going through, Jordan hitting it, and Jordan scoring! His first point of the day! We're in the third minute of the four minutes of added time. He's got a goal already, and Tomas O'Shea comes down looking for something else. Freed outside here. They come forward once again, this time it's with Brian Sheehan. The substitute trying to go through, spills loose, straight as far as Michael McGee, and McGee tigerishly holds on. Tension all around the place. This time it's Ryan McMenamin. Still McMenamin. There's still going to be another minute to play after all of this, and Kerry may get the ball back. They do. Tomas O'Shea has it. Sensational All Ireland final. Inside to Darrell O'Shea. This time, various things are happening off the ball. Let's continue with watching what's happening. Mike Frank Russell into space. Nobody there for it. Colin Cooper was taken out of the action there. As I saw it, the referee's whistle sounds. It's all over. Bam. And Tyrone have won the All-Ireland. Absolutely sensational performance by Tyrone. They've won by three points. They had so many heroes. And after ten matches... In the 2005 Championship, they have come and they have beaten the champions of last year. And Mickey Hart and his backroom team have engineered a most wonderful success. And that's the final score. It's Tyrone 116, Kerry 210. Tyrone won it for the first time in 2003. They win it for the second in 2005. And Brian Dewar lifts the Sam McGuire Cup. Tyrone are worthy champions. It's good to be back, isn't it? As Peter said here two years ago, I can't think of a better place to be this day. There's a lot of people I have to thank for getting this team to where we are today. Uh, but first and foremost, and probably the most important man, this man should be here instead of me receiving this cup up today. His name is Cormac McAllen. There had never been a season like it. Spectacular matches everywhere as Gaelic football was brought to a new level of speed and skill. Tyrone were worthy champions. They played all the best teams and beat them. Winning the 2005 championship was an immense achievement. Winning again in 2006 will be even harder. More than 1.3 million fans paid into the football championship in 2005. We salute the county boards, the fans, and most of all the players who once again show the world that both passion and skills go hand in hand to produce something quite wonderful. Roll on, Sam 06.